Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands and we're back to hands again. Uh, today's question comes from Paul White. Uh, by the way, uh, today uh, I will answer the, uh, this question and then I will continue with some of, you know, uh, my memories and thoughts about uh, beloved Father Dimitri. So, uh, Paul, uh, Paul White asks, and this question made me laugh, <laughs> I don't mean to sound insensitive, but now that your spiritual father has died, do you need to get a new one? <laughs> uh, uh, you're not insensitive. It's uh, you know, uh, it is it is something that I have discussed with Father Dimitri. <laughs> I just find <laughs> I just found it funny, you know, that somebody else was also pondering the issue. Yes, I need to get a new one, and I uh, have taken him out of my closet. He's brand new. I have ungagged him, and right now he's learning to walk again. Okay, now, in all seriousness, uh, um, first of all, just some general sentiment. I don't think that spiritual fathers are an absolute necessity. However, they're very good to have, you know, uh, and at least in my case, you know, Father Dimitri was a literal godsend. Uh, so, but... Um, I, yeah, I would say that um, I, I need a new one, but, you know, it's interesting. Um, recently, you know, uh, my every conversation with Father Dimitri would uh, start with him basically asking, are you in any sort of spiritual crisis? And I would say, eh, no. So we would, you know, just share memes, joke, uh, share what happened with our day and so on. So, uh, you know, he was my spiritual father, but I didn't, you know, ask him spiritual fathery things. Because after 15 years, uh, you sort of <laughs> uh, learn what he will say, uh, and um, you, you know, get used to it, you anticipate his answers, and, well, life teaches you, you know? But... Uh, let us say that, you know, you have to change your spiritual father, or your spiritual father has died. Uh, so, um, a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, it is okay to change your spiritual father. Uh, for example, you may, fi uh, you may find a better priest, uh, someone you get along better, or you move, uh, and similar. But, of course, this shouldn't be taken lightly. Um... But, uh, as a friend of mine has explained to me beautifully, uh, uh, when you change your spiritual fathers, for whatever reason, your previous spiritual father sort of remains your spiritual father. And he used this beautiful example of, you know, professors. Like, uh, when you meet your math teacher... Uh, from your elementary school, you still call him your teacher, you know, hi teacher, how are you, and so on. Um, and when you uh, go to high school and you get, you know, a new math uh, professor, you will refer to him as your math professor, even uh, after you have enrolled law and don't need maths at all, until you start doing taxes, and then you realize that you do need maths. Okay, I'm, I'm going on a tangent here which is also worth from ads. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, um, you can change them, or you, or in this case, you might be forced to change them, which is very unfortunate, but, you know, it happens. In my case, um, uh, I was considering this one specific priest that Father Dimitri knew, um, and I considered him because he had that same sort of spirit like Father Dimitri, you know, uh, sort of like uh, that, I'm, um, that I was talking to a younger version of him. So, you know, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm, um, I'm provided for in that regard. Uh, and until, <laughs> until I make my spiritual father too, God forbid I ever make it, you won't learn his name because I know. It's a spiritual father, spiritual child privilege. Unless I move to California, then I will be forced by the law to uh, to uh, 
disclose uh, his or her name, but it's a he, because it's difficult to, to get a spiritual mother. So, you know, I thought um, i share some of Father Dimitri's wisdom. Oh, he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, because we uh, conversed over uh, Yahoo Messenger, uh, primarily, um, I have a uh, uh, I have kept the archives uh, to our chats, um, and uh, a lot of these were preserved. Um, however, uh, at one point Yahoo Messenger kept all the archives uh, online, and now that uh, it is defunct, um, I can't reach them. So some of his, you know, wisdom was lost in the tra uh, in the transition, but oh well, you know. Um, uh, all of his advice, uh, a lot of his advice was very personal to me, so um, I, I really don't like sharing, you know, advice uh, advice that uh, that is a specific to one person. But he had some general, uh, general advice that I really liked. For example, uh, early in my spiritual life, I would get really anxious about other people's salvation. And this reached pathological levels. Oh God, people, what what did I do? Uh, I would um, I would read ecatists constantly. I would donate candles, incense, oil to churches, all in the. Um, and I had this pathological table, where I would uh, write what I don dono donated for every person I knew. So there was this list of people, and they marked. Okay, I donated a bottle of oil for this person, and it for these pe people. Uh, and so on. It it was pathological. I uh, I mean, uh, it was borderline insane. And uh, Father Dimitri would probably object that it was borderline. Um, uh, Father Dimitri uh, taught me two things: not to worry, uh, and to trust in Christ, and not to fear Him. And this had um, a couple of you know. Uh, a couple of effects on me. Uh, first of all, <laughs> as regards to worry, he would oh he would say this so often. Uh, why pray when you can worry? And this was great. Like uh, you know, uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> I'm thinking if I ever make some sort of Bible illustrated merchandise, uh, I'm thinking of putting his why worry when you uh, why uh, why pray when you can worry. Uh, with, you know, some sarcastic emoji on the side. That was so him, you know. Um, and he taught me not um, not to fear Christ, because at, uh, at my uh, concern over other people's salvation, um, lied, es uh, lied essentially uh, distrust of God and fear of God and lack of love for God. Because uh, uh, I, wa I was essentially trying to save those people with ecatists and uh, church donations and uh, giving alms and so on. Because, well, God can be trusted, you know, to save somebody. So I better uh, have tons of merits that I can, you know, give to these people. Uh, but, you know, he cured me of that, you know, with his love and very good, very good and quality advice. Uh, I'm now sort of regretting that uh, that I um, didn't separate this in, this into two videos, but eh, whatever. Um, and if any of you guys know about Vladika Dmitri of South, um, Father uh, he ordained Father Dmitri to both deaconate and priesthood, and he was his. Oh, I think I only now I understand how he felt when uh, Vladika Dmitri died. And um, I will share uh, a miracle with you. Uh, and you can find images of this online, I'm pretty sure, rather easily. Um, when Vladika Dmitri died, you know, they buried him. And um, I, uh, Father, Father Dmitri, uh, so I know it's complicated. Uh, I'll, I'll simply use bishop and priest with priest being my spiritual father and bishop, you know, just for difference, because uh, both were named uh, 
essentially the same except Father Dimitri had an I uh, after D and Vladika uh, Dimitri didn't. Also, by the way, if you don't know, uh, in English, Vladika uh, in uh, English, in Orthodox Church, Vladika is an affectionate, um, affectionate name for a bishop. And it comes from Slavic languages, Serbian as well, where we also call our bishop, uh, bishops Vladikas. But it doesn't have that uh, affectionate connotation as it has in English. So anyway, um, everyone thought that uh, the bishop, uh, Dmitri, was a saint. And uh, after three years, I believe, after his burial, uh, they wanted to move him to a special chapel, which was, which is beautiful. I, I, I wanna go there and attend the liturgy some some day. And um, when they dug out his coffin, they found that his relics were incorrupt, which is in Orthodox ch Church a very strong indication that someone uh, is a saint. Um, and you will probably go. Well, I'm subscribed to Ask a Mortician. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, uh, people know about uh, uh, decay much better. Uh, okay, that is um, that is all fine and dandy. But thing is, uh, the coffin was filled with water. Uh, his vestments have uh, rotted away. Um, casket was in a very bad condition, and yet. Uh, his hands, after three years being underground in moist conditions, uh, look like uh, the emaciated hands of an old person. If I uh, if I saw the photos, I wouldn't think that the person uh, died. You know, ju that just that the person was really old, and it's a miracle. You know, uh, and, uh, and uh, now that I think about it, I think that. Uh, Father Dimitri got so much uh, from the bishop, and I, in turn, in turn, got so much from uh, Father Father Dimitri, and that is that is the that is how saints work, you know. Uh, the bishop spreads his flame uh, of the Pentecostal fire around him, and the priest does that too, and you know, some some bring fruit. Hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold, and that is how everything works in the church. Saints make saints, and fat readers. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you, uh, guys, all so much for your prayers, uh, especially for uh, <laughs> in order his family, and because they need it the most himself, uh, because well. He's go going on a, a little bit scary journey, but a very loving journey. And, well, for me, I'm doing pretty well, you know. So, focus on his family, you know. Bye.